Hi everyone, welcome. Um, so I've had these two items for uh, for quite some time. Towards the end of last year I got them and I was going to go through the whole book, go through the chapters, explain them, um, I'd be able to teach myself and hopefully I'd be able to give you uh, viewers a head start as well via the book. Anyway, it didn't happen for whatever reason. I'd like to say that I could be able to do this every week and go through the chapters and do all that, but it just doesn't work that way anymore, I'm afraid. Um, but I'm going to try to, anyway. I'm going to try to do a chapter of this every week and record it. It's a bit of a pain in the bum, really, um, recording it. You know, I can do it myself and it'll probably take, you know, half an hour or so. But doing it with, with uh, the camera on, it takes ages. Um, so I tried to do it at my office, my new office. But it's so, you can't get the tripod in and, you know, you're struggling like the silly angles like this trying to work with it. Got a laptop there and it's just a nightmare. So I'm back in my old office and it's freezing in here, but I've got a little gas fire. I've got the proper uh, thing up here that holds the camera. I've got my big lights here, here and here. I've got the worktop. So really here's the ideal place and I've got all my components and all that sort of stuff. So here's the ideal place. It's just not as comfortable and it's a bit colder. Anyway, I'm waff waffling on quite a lot. So, oh, the other thing as well is that um, I got sick of editing the videos. You know, editing them and putting thumbnails on and all this sort of stuff. Putting the effects in. It takes so long and it's boring. I like doing this stuff. I don't like editing videos. Um, so... What I'm going to do here, I'm going to record the video, chop, record the video, chop, and then just put all the pieces together, and there you go, done. So, how to get started with MicroPython on Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, this book here, I researched it, and I found this to be the best book for Raspberry Pi um, Pico. I found this to be the best one. I had looked for about half an hour or so. Anyway, you can buy this for about £10. I was very kindly given it um, by Alex at um, Raspberry Pi Foundation. The interesting thing is that Raspberry Pi Foundation um, is actually based in Cheltenham from what I remember, which is not even two hours away from my house. So Raspberry Pi, for the whole world, their headquarters is just a few hours away from my house. Kind of weird. Anyway. So I got this from them. They gave it to me for free um, because I was going to do YouTube videos. But I think they probably charge about £10, 7 to £10 or something. Which is quite good actually for this book because it's very, very well written. This here I got again for free. And this is from a Chinese company called Maker Fabs. And this was sent to me um, by a lady called Jennifer He. Uh, so thank you for this too. So I'm going to put the link in the description to buy this, but yeah, it's from makerfabs.com. Um, I can't remember exactly how much it is off the top of my head, but I don't remember it being too expensive. Now the good thing about this is that they've written it for, uh, sorry, not written it, they've composed it for this book. Even compose is not the right word. Compiled, maybe. Compiled it. And inside... You have a little card with the pinouts, which is really, really good. You have the Raspberry Pi. You have loads of different bits. You can get a breadboard. You even get the USB thing, USB cable. You get LEDs and all sorts of stuff. Um, so, yeah. I'll put the link in the description for that, too. And um, you can get it if you want to. So, that's the kit I'm going to be using to do this tutorial. Okay, so if you've got one of these kits, or you're going to get one of these kits, take the Raspberry Pi out if you can. You get it in an anti static bag like that, and then you have it like this. The reason why they're like this is because they, when they're produced, they're packed in reels like this, and they slice, you know, one by side by side, and they slice it off, and then somebody wants to order 10, they'll get 10 in a, in a line. Anyway, so, anti-static. 
So you're not really, I mean basically these are static sensitive and you should really wear an anti-static strap and all that sort of stuff but I've never done that and I've never had any problems. Some people are probably going to um, get a bit mad and put some comments but that's fine. Anyway, so that's the Raspberry Pi Pico. Right, so I'm going to tell you a bit more about the Pico first and then we'll look at that again. So the Raspberry Pi Pico, you can program it with a language called MicroPython. You can also program it with another language actually, but we won't go into that. But MicroPython is what we'll be discussing in this, this tutorial. So it's for it can be used for smart homes um, and lots of other things right the way up to large factories. So it's for automation systems basically. Um, it's a microcontroller that can do all sorts. It can control robots, machines, lighting, and lots of other things. It's it's marketed as being very easy to learn, but microcontrollers, um, I must admit, are not the easiest of things to learn. You know, it's not like learning how to make a cup of tea or something. There's programming involved. There's knowledge of electronics involved. So it kind of makes people um, possibly feel a bit stupid if they can't learn this. Um, but you've got to stick at it, and you will you will get better and better. But yeah, easy to learn, allegedly. Programming is not easy to learn, but there you go. Um, as far as microcontrollers go, um, it is fairly easy. So yeah, it's a microcontroller. Raspberry Pis, the old Raspberry Pis, are not microcontrollers. They're computers. So you actually put an operating system on them, and they have ports for peripherals, keyboards, mice, stuff like that. They've got a VGA port. Um, to connect monitors um, or HDMI ports and whatever but this is a microcontroller so they aren't headed in the typical direction that Raspberry Pi do it's a microcontroller so this is more like the Arduino um, if you're watching this video you've probably heard of the Arduino the Arduino is a really great microcontroller um, I talk about it a lot in my channel but basically this is Raspberry Pi's I don't know, interpretation of it, I, I guess. Although it's a bit different. Anyway, so yeah, it's not a computer. Now let's have a look at the, the microcontroller. i just bring it up here. Hopefully it'll focus. Is it going to focus? Put it on my hand, that usually does it. There we go. Now I can take my hand away. That's a bit weird, isn't it? So looking at the Raspberry Pi Pico, what can we see? So we've got these castellations here, this gold strip. Yeah, these are castellated. So it's like as if there's a hole and then there's half a hole. So what this is for is, if you've got a board, you can lay it on the board and then there will be pads on the board. So you lay it flat and you put the solder, you put the solder on the pads and in that little hole there, not the hole but the half hole. So you kind of mount the, the solder in there like that. It'd probably be better if I could draw it, wouldn't it really? So you have um, you have the hole like that. don't know if that makes much sense. Kind of like that. And then the pad of the board you solder it to would be there like that. So here's the PCB and you basically fill all of this with solder and this as well so it'll kind of go like that sort of shape and basically what that would do is it'd contact the castellation here with the board and you'd solder all of these in or certainly the pins that you need anyway um, and that's why it's like that, that's why you've got these castellations so you've also got space for the, the pins here which are the more standard uh, ways of doing it. So what you would do with the pins is you'd um, put a row on, then you solder them in the standard way, and then you push them down into a breadboard. So a breadboard is this thing here. That's a breadboard. So you'd attach the pins at the back. You could actually attach them to the front as well and do it a different way. I'll explain that in a minute. But basically you'd push it in there like that. 
So this is breadboard friendly, which means that the pins line up with the standard pins. They have a pitch of 2.54 millimeters, I think. So yeah, that's what that is. Let me see if I have some of those headers here. They probably do have them in here. Yeah, there you go, there's some. So these things, you can put them in that way and then you solder there and you've got this at the bottom. Some people have it this way, which I don't really like, but you can do it that way. So if you imagine we had it that way, you can now push it into the breadboard, couldn't you? So that's what they're for. I've spent far too much time talking about castellations. So the pins do various things. So they're a bit like the GPIO on other microcontrollers. Well, let's just call them IO, which means input and output. So when these are connected, the Raspberry Pi can output to something or you can input to the Raspberry Pi via these little pins. And you don't need to use all of them, you can just solder some of them up, it's up to you, or use some of them, connect some of them, it's up to you. There are some that genuinely need to be um, you know, wired up in certain situations, but we can go into that more in more detail later on. So yeah, these are the I.O. Um, pins. They're not soldered. And the reason they're not soldered is because um, Raspberry Pi don't know what you want to do with it. Maybe you want it flat, maybe you want to use the castellations, maybe you want the pins up, or maybe you want them down. So they don't solder them so that you can do it yourself. The USB port here, this is to potentially power it and to communicate with it. So when you plug it in here to a PC, you can copy sketches over. I don't know if they call them sketches in Raspberry Pi, but you copy files over basically which tell the Raspberry Pi what to do uh, when it's powered. So yeah, that can, that can give the Raspberry Pi power and it can also be a means of communication. So you can also power it through two pins on here but uh, again we'll go into that later. You've got the chip there which is the brain if you like and you've got boot cell. So there are two modes that this can run in um, but again, that's not that's not too important. We can talk about that later. What else is there to look at? We've got some capacitors and transistors and things. On the back, on the back, you've got this. This is called a silk screen, um, which you could just see it as labelling, really. So each of the pins are labelled so that you can identify them. So if a tutorial says connect GP5 or whatever, or connect to ground or something you know what to do. And we've also got this here which is debug which you don't use, well, I've never used it anyway. Um, I've never even used it on any of the other microcontrollers either but you can get something, I don't know what uh, Raspberry Pi is called but one of them is called a JTAG. We won't be needing it though and like I said I've never used it in my history of doing this. 